So when I was growing up, I played a lot of computer games. I played a lot of strategy games. And I thought that I was really good at those games. But I was annoyed that being good at those games didn't make me cool. It didn't make girls like me. Whereas being good at a physical sport like football, girls would like me for that. Well, in the Western countries that I grew up in, England and America, esports never kind of rose to the same level of a sport. Here in Korea, they did. Luckily, for those of us who are past our competitive gaming prime, there are plenty of other gigs available in the esports industry. Equally as famous as the players themselves are the professional commentators, known as shoutcasters. Their energetic play-by-play -play analysis is one of the biggest draws for fans. Xpeke snuck around the side, teleported into the base, and then he's on the Nexus, and I'm like, oh, oh, this is happening. Oh, okay, this is, this is happening. He's a completely different type of player. He's on a completely different level. We've got the consistent players, and we've got the clutch players. Pekka is consistently a clutch player. That's gonna be some big damage. The exhaust to stay in Whoa. range. Oh my gosh, they actually pull off the kill as well. You can see the crowd is even stunned on that one. To find out what it takes to become a shoutcaster, I went for a lesson at Nice Game TV. Biata! One of the four running online esports stations in Seoul. Let's go see your studios. <laughs> this is our webcam. Oh, wow. So we're live right now. Yeah. Oh, hi. Okay, live casting. Gachi Hago, Inje, Yoa Tingoga, Inje, Chatting, Shonga de Gachi Ponungolo, Gachi Yagi Hamanzo. Internet streaming The amount of people watching this right now is just insane. The, the screen is just scrolling through hundreds and hundreds of messages. People saying, gay, bye, hey, hi, I love you. No, not gay. What the fuck? Hey, gay TV, nice gay TV. Hi, yeah, I can see you're all saying hi. And look forward to our documentary about esports where you'll all feature and all of your very mature comments on my sexuality. <laughs> We're going to do a live stream of a League of Legends game, and I don't really know much about the game, but hopefully I'll be able to learn as we go. So what's going on here? I agree. Oh, he almost killed him, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Esports is the you GG? Yeah, GG, good game. Yeah, game is Ah, GG! Okay. Ah, GG! Let's they initiated when they need to initiate. I mean, I had no question that they were going to win from the beginning. They really deserved this. Yeah. They put 110% in, and it's great to see them win. Yeah. A good GG. In addition to broadcasting, Nice Game TV also train up and coming talent. They introduced us to two young gamers who had just been scouted by a professional team. How many hours do you put in per day or, or per week? Do you have a plan if it doesn't work out in gaming? Absolutely. So we've just left the Nice Game TV studios where we met some of the world's future esports stars. They have this almost robotic dedication to the game where they're playing 14 or 15 hours. I can only imagine what effect that must have on a young person's mind and life. Internet addiction is said to affect 2 million South Koreans and half of its entire teenage population. In 2011, Congresswoman Shin Wee Jin passed a law known as the Cinderella Act, putting internet addiction in the same category as drugs and alcohol, 
and preventing children under the age of 16 from playing online games after midnight. By making them use their national identity numbers, children's online accounts now automatically shut down when the clock strikes 12. The Cinderella Act created an uproar in the gaming community, who found political representation in a gaming congressman named Byun Jo Hoon. Spearheading the campaign, the congressman dressed up in League of Legends cosplay in solidarity with the gamers. As head of the Korean Esports Association, he was also cleverly enticing the votes of Korea's rapidly expanding gamer demographic. But despite the gamers' retaliation, a quarter of those diagnosed with internet addiction will end up being hospitalized in a government-sponsored internet rehab center. I'm in the waiting room. I'm here to meet a guy called Dr. Lee J. Won. We've heard that he has some pretty unorthodox methods of treating people with computer game addiction. We've heard something about brain scans with electrodes, virtual reality therapy, and some kind of magnetic brain pulse. I don't know anything about neuropsychiatry, and I certainly don't know anything about brain pulse therapy. So I'm especially curious to find out how those methods can help cure someone who plays too many computer games. What are the types of people who suffer from internet addiction? 청소년층이라는 것은 나이가 좀 어린일 경우에 이렇게 이제 중독의 위험성은 나이가 어리다는 것 자체가 위험 인자라고 이제 생각할 만큼 굉장히 높아지게 마련이거든요. How much of this is a result of specifically online gaming? 저희 나라는 거의 대부분 90% 이상이 온라인 게임 에릭션입니다. 예, 그래서 일단은 가장 첫 번째 기초가 되는 게 검사고요. 예, 브레인 스캔이 먼저가 되겠죠 아무래도. Sitting here has maybe realized that if I actually was a gaming addict, how terrifying this would be if my parents had forced me to be here and a doctor was putting electrodes on my head. <웃음> Whoa. In 2005. A young South Korean man dropped dead after playing StarCraft for 50 hours straight. And since then, the perceived dangers of gaming addiction have been a considerable source of anxiety for Korea's older generations. But generally, the most extreme symptoms of gaming addiction are sleep deprivation, mood swings, and seizures. Every time I hear that clicking noise from the next room, I know that someone's getting their brain fried by magnetic shock therapy. It felt like someone had struck my bones with a tuning fork. But was I cured? To find out, I had to enter Dr. Lee's final stage of therapy, in which patients are sat in a chair and told to watch footage of violent video games, like the Ludovico technique from A Clockwork Orange, to see how much they can endure without getting the urge to game. So this is the final stages of your treatment. What do you consider a cured patient? 치료에 대한 개념이 옛날과 조금 달라진 게요. 이제 본인 스스로 그러니까 예를 들면 마약 같은 경우에는 전혀 안 하는 게 치료의 목표가 되겠지만 이 인터넷이나 이런 것들은 사실은 아예 안 한다는 개념보다는 내가 스스로 정상적인 사람들처럼 조절해서 사용할 수 있는 상태를 만들어 주는 게 치료의 어떤 이제 상태라고 생각을 해요. Would you consider the professional gamers to be at risk of addiction or already addicted? 음, 그래서 이제 재미난 이제 브레인 스캔을 한 연구 결과도 있습니다. 그래서 결론은 인터넷 중독자하고 프로 게이머의 뇌는 다르다. 예. 그래서 이거를 어디다 어떻게 놓고 사용하느냐에 따라서 그러니까 자기 앞으로 어떤 미래 또 내가 어떤 목표가 있고 그거에 따라서 훈련하는데 인터넷 게임을 하는 거는 정상적인 뇌 활동에 방해가 되지 않는데 이걸 내가 뭐 어디서 대리 만족을 받아야 되는 또는 나의 그런 안에 이제 올라오는 이런 감정을 분출하기 위한 이런 
대리만족의 도구로 인터넷 게임을 사용을 하게 되면 은 이거는 뇌에 이상을 계속 초래하게 된다는 이야기가 되는 거죠. Whatever you think about this particular brand of brain zapping therapy, one thing is for sure, the speed at which gaming was taking over Korea was making a lot of people genuinely worried. In today's world of global comic cons, cosplay is everywhere. But much like esports, it's the Koreans who do it best. Costume competitions are almost as competitive as the esports leagues themselves, and teams who aim to win trophies have to treat it as a full-time career. We went to the outskirts of Seoul to meet one of Korea's top esports cosplay crews, Team CSL. We're in a kind of peaceful, idyllic suburban town, the kind of place you might want to retire to. In one of these houses is a cosplay team. There's knights, dragons, mythical creatures, all hanging out, while the community has no idea that unbeknownst to them, through there is a portal to a mythical world. It is a bit Twin Peaksy. I feel like I'm visiting my nan's house, except my nan wouldn't have a battle axe outside. Hi, Hello. how's it going? Hello. Hey guys, how are you? Hi. You guys make all your own costumes. Yeah, we go. 저랑 우리 대표님이랑 팀원들이 그런 거 우리들이 제작하는 거. How can a human fit inside this? 뭐니? 아니, 다른. But what about the practicality of this? I mean, you've never made a costume this big. What if it all just goes totally wrong and you fall over in front of hundreds of people? Difficult to do. Too sad. Most of our parents don't actually accept the hobby because they're like, it's a waste of time. And they think that costume play is for kids. So they don't understand what we get out of all this. My house is dirty, you're making a mess and you're wearing a child's costume. So I'm going to try on a costume that they've picked for me. It's one of the League of Legends characters and apparently it involves spandex. Okay, this might be really revealing, I'm warning you. How do I look? <laughs> okay, so is this my character? Yes. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Paul Israel. What? Paul's Israel. Paul's Israel. Cool. Is he like a Zionist knight? <laughs> okay, cool. So what's this? Is this my weapon? Yes. You can turn on switch. Is it doing anything? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. nice! This isn't as uncomfortable as I thought. I could totally just wear this all day. I might go out like this in the future. <laughs> Do I look like a cyberpunk Kurt Cobain right now? Because that's what I feel like. So, Kyung Min has just invited us to take his golf cart up to one of his favorite spots in town so I can look like this in an environment that's more suitable to League of Legends. Than There's only so much you can learn about the culture as a whole by watching people play computer games for hours on end. If you really want to understand gaming, dress up like a giant robot, get into the wilderness, and then you'll know that computer games are fucking awesome.